Hello and welcome back. We're going to have a look at a model today which I think comes from 1958. So we've got the price list here and it's a green princess we're in interested in and that's model R53. Princess, loco green. I think we've got 55 shillings and six. And underneath there, of course, because the, the tender was sold separately, there's tender green livery. And then we've got six shillings and nine. Lovely looking price list with that red red type on that slightly cream looking paper. Just a swift look at the other side. It's in a lovely condition. There's the all important address at the bottom there. Westwood Margate, Kent. We'll pop that to one side. I think we've seen this catalogue before. It's got somebody's name scribbled on the top here. Roger Jones. And that terrific uh, group of models on the front of the cover there and some of these filled in the O's look. So we'll just have a, a swift look inside. Now the Green Princess was available between 53 and 62. And I believe the model I'm looking at today comes from about 58 because it has the uh, early crest and it's got the full lining and valve gear and brass safety valves. And we've got her on the layout with a handful of these coaches as well. Just have a, a quick look at the page on the left there. And there's the factory and there's one, one of those little lapel type badges there. Terrific looking thing. And I believe she shows up again on the, a later page in the, in the catalog here. There she is at the top of that page of British steam locomotives. Lovely page, isn't it? And there we go, we've got a detail. There's, there's two separate items here, R53 and R31 for the tender. And we'll just have a, a swift look at the model here. So a Trang Railways box. Fairly nice condition, R53, 462 Princess Loco, green livery. Let's just look at the other end. It's been beaten a little bit more here, on and off shelves perhaps. Effective tape there. See underneath. So that's what the box is for to protect the model. Possibly a price has been there at some point, but there's not even any pencil marking for, for a price on the model here. So we can't cross-reference it with the price list. So it's fairly stiff to get the lid off here. So we'll just carefully remove it. There we go. And it's still got some of its packing pieces there. We'll just have a look at that. Missing the bottle of oil and, and no paperwork. Beautiful looking model, isn't it? Plain valve gear. Solid wheels, of course, from this period. I'm not going to take it out of the box just at the moment. We'll, we'll look at that in a moment. We'll pop that down. And then we've got the tender. Again, box has done its job over the years by the looks of it. R31 Princess Tender. Green livery. Plenty of tape being on there and the flaps folded in so we must get access to the, the other end, I think. And a little bit of fading on the print there. Is that a price? I can't quite read the price on there. Or is it just, just scribbling? I'm not quite sure. And there's a, another scribbling there. That's five and something there, isn't it? Perhaps just five shillings. We'll just open that out there. We'll gently pull out the tender. This one comes out of the packaging a little bit easier. Now we see that lovely early crest lining almost perfectly intact there. Nice coal load, Mark II coupling on the back. Metal buffers pushed into the plastic work there. Sleeved wheels on solid axles and we've got uh, Triang's name and R30 and 31. Split model numbers there. And we've got uh, Made in England down there. I can't quite get that in focus, I don't think. Maybe we can just see that there. There's a little bit of shrinkage gone on on this tender, if you look, look at this. I don't think it was made of acetate, but I think through age it's shrunk and warped a little, but she does run. Lovely amount of detail in there, isn't there? I don't know whether that's a moulding or, or varnish. Or just where it came out of the mould. Two different, slightly different sorts of plastic, perhaps. Just lining up the turntable there with the appropriate track and then we'll move her smoothly off up onto the bridge there. Like many other models of her period, she has a, a very sort of heavy, solid feeling 
when she's running on the rails, it's, it's very satisfying. There we go. Oh, we'll move her smoothly off out through the point right there. Really lovely. Now, the Green Princess Elizabeth disappeared from the catalogue in 1962, and she returned again in 63 as a CKD model, R386, and she, she lasted till 69 in that format. Then in 1974, there was another Green Princess, R053, but this time named Victoria, and I believe that was just for, for the mail order catalogues, and just hook up with these coaches. I've just removed the model from the box and the packing blocks, and we'll just have a swift look at them. I think they're beautiful pieces of packaging. Missing the, the bottle of oil, of course, so it says lift out both end blocks with model, remove securing inserts before extracting model from blocks. Now, this one's for the front. You can see the aperture there, but missing the old uh, securing insert, sadly. Great big staples just beginning to, to rust a little there. So we'll pop that one down and we'll have a look at the one for the rear. And this one still does have the uh, securing insert. And there it is. So rear base insert. Again, model numbers on there. Lovely things, aren't they? A really great piece of design. We're just having a, a swift look over the model here. Now I don't want to touch it too much because the varnish is slightly sort of tacky to the touch. So. We'll just have a look at her sitting on the rolling road there. Great brass safety valves. Look at those windows in, in the front of the cab there. A really beautiful thing, these princess models. Excellent lining on the side of the cab there in, in pretty good shape. As we saw earlier on the tender, there was a little bit of lining missing here and there. It's just beginning to peel, sadly. But then it is quite some age, this model. Just have a look back along the top of the model there. Great detail on the cab roof. And those boiler bands look really great with that green, don't they? Just looking at the top of the chimney there, we've got the, the screw holding the body onto the chassis. We'll just swing back around the, the front of the model here and look at the smoke box door. That lovely handrail there. Metal buffers just pushed into that bright red buffer beam. And we'll just look down the other side of the model. Metal buffers pushed into the uh, buffer beam there. Great big Mark II coupling. Just just like the lining on the other side, it's just beginning to peel on the edges, sadly. I'm not sure how many years more that will last. So it's in fairly good overall condition. You can see the dust there stuck to the varnish. Now this has lived in its box since I got it and it'll probably go straight back in the box once we've finished playing with it on the layout today. And away she goes. And that's absolutely effortless. Making such a terrific noise with those coaches through the point work there. And we'll switch point 11 behind them and off into the distance. Now these maroon and cream coaches were available between 56 and 62. I imagine they were a popular choice with this model in the period. We'll bring her gently to a stop at the station here. Lovely shop there. I've just removed the very large securing screw from the chimney very carefully. We'll pop that to one side and we'll just pick up the model as carefully as we can. And we'll just have a, a swift look over it. More specifically on the underside there because we've seen the outside of it already. We can see Triang's name, made in England. And there we've got the, the model number there, R50 for the black variant and 53, so the same mold. The red variation, I think, was still to come when, when this was made. So we'll just have a, a quick look and see if we can see any the cab detail in there. And there we go. And the slit at the bottom of the, the cab there is where the chassis slots in and secures the, the other end. The screw down the chimney and the slot at the end there. Those great cab windows from the inside, no glazing at all, of course. You can see that transfer very very close up there, see how wrinkly it is over the, over the plastic molding. I wonder how long they will last eventually. Still, they're very pretty to have a look at and run on the layout today. So we'll pop that down. And we'll just have a, a swift look at the, the chassis here. If you look in the insert picture in the top right corner, you can see how beautifully she runs. We'll just have a, a swift look over it, see if we can get some focus. Not much run time on this model. Have a look underneath. 
It's a, just a lovely thing. Front bobby there with plastic wheels on metal axles. Really nice. I'll just turn that around and have a swift look at the other side. There we go. I say that the motor has done hardly any running whatsoever. And there she goes, absolutely effortless. Point works a little bit uneven there. Sadly, the baseboards have begun to warp. So I think we'll definitely use uh, plywood on the next occasion, whenever that might be. And we're going to go around the layout and through points number seven onto the outside line. That's the first radius curve there. That slows everything down a little. And straight through the points with no effort for us whatsoever. Switch those behind them. Storming into the third radius curve, picking up a little speed now in anticipation of climbing up. There we go, no magna heating now, so we've got this tiniest bit of wheel slip, but I think she's doing okay. Leveling out now, up to express train speeds now, of course, but we will have to back off the power then as we drop down the other side. We don't want any dera derailments as she comes into the, the curve there. Absolutely lovely, just look at this shot as she storms past the diesel electric there. We'll just jump back into the 58 catalogue here. We've got uh, R28, the brake coach there, and sitting next to a R29, the mainline composite coach. And we'll flip over a page and have a look at the, the restaurant car. The great blue curtains, there she is, model number R224, and the brake. And the uh, composite came along in 1956, and the uh, restaurant came along in 57. All three lasted till uh, 1962, although they, they did get uh, Mark III couplings and, and bow ends by the time they, they disappeared. We'll just have a, a quick look at what these items cost back in 1958. And then we've got R28 the brake and R29 the composite, and both of these models are nine shillings and three. And if we look further down the list for the restaurant coach, R224, BR restaurant car, 10 shillings and six. Now I think the the, uh, the difference in price accounts for the interior fittings in, in the restaurant car. The, uh, the, the brake and the composite didn't get uh, interiors until the early 60s. So that, that could well account for the difference in cost there. So we'll just have a swift look over the models. We've seen these earlier in the years, uh, earlier in the year, sorry, in a couple of other videos, lovely detail on the ends there. Great big numbering, although that did get smaller over time. I say these, these early models had flat ends rather than bowed ends and the roofs on, on the brake and the composite are, are glued on, although this one suffered some damage here. The underframe detail is shared across all of the, all three of these models. We've got sleeved wheels and uh, open axle boxes there on each of these models today. So we'll just have a look at the restaurant coach. There's lovely blue curtains there and we can see the, the interior fitting which accounts for the ex extra cost I think. Lovely roof detail there with all those ventilators running down the length of it. We'll just turn it around and have a look at the other side. Fairly tidy condition. This is the, all these are unboxed, these models. So let's pop that down and we'll just have a look at the composite. And they've all got metal buffers just, just pushed into the, the plastic bodywork. And that glazing unit is just a, a sheet of cellul celluloid or cellophane type material, plastic bent over like that underneath. So when you've got the, the glued on roofs, they're very difficult to clean. When you've got the screw in the bottom to take the roof off, you can take them out and clean them and make them look nice and bright. But uh, the dirt we see inside these is, is there for good, I think. Just a little bit of wear here, but uh, I say they've done fairly well for their age. And there she goes. We're definitely traveling at proper toy train speed now with a big smile on the face and it makes just a, a terrific noise. I wonder how many of those coaches they did make over there, their production run. Must be quite a number. Let's just watch and see if we can see a little wheel slip there. I imagine the later models that had uh, magnahesion would, would make very light work of that with no slip whatsoever with just those three coaches. Well, I think that's probably it for this week. 
Thanks again for watching, it's hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.